Clarence graphics card was running at like 100 degrees idle while water cooled. But the water still has to run through this graphics card. You can see how terrible oh, it is. No. Can you see the floater right there? It moves around if you tip the card. Oof! The metal touched my skin and it kind of burnt a little bit. But the, the problem that I have right now is the plan was to just remove the graphics card from the loop, put another graphics card in there, and then have the loop go through this non-powered graphics card, which would hopefully not add any temperature to the loop, and then it would be fine. But I don't even want to run this computer on the full loop if it's this gunked up. Corsair delivers real mech or oh here I have one. Hi! Real mech or nothing with their new strafe mechanical keyboard featuring genuine German-made Cherry MX key switches. Click on my chin to learn more. I'm gonna move my chin now just to throw you for a loop. At last, my friends, it is finally, finally here. The conclusion of the whole room water cooling system series of videos that we have waited over a year since initially putting these systems together to finally talk about whether or not the concept worked, whether or not in practice it actually worked, and the wait is over. Only a couple more minutes. It kind of reminds me of that, uh, that BMW video that I was teasing on social media not that long ago about the all new one series. Drop a like on the bottom of the video if you want to see us finally release that, because I think we're very close. Let's go. So I want to do a recap of the concept for those who haven't been following along the whole time. Our editing den is in a south facing room of the house that we have been running Linus Media Group out of for the last year and a half and it gets friggin hot in here. So my brilliant idea was what if we took all of our editing workstations and removed the heat from the room via water cooling. So it started with redoing our editing workstations which used to be just a haphazard mix of parts that we had left over from reviews and are now pretty much all standardized. So they've got N600 cases from Cooler Master, water cooling by Swift Tech and I'll explain why there's a radiator on the outside of the system in spite of the whole room water cooling. I'll explain that later. Uh, We've got 4960X six core processors, those are extreme editions, 32 gigs of Kingston memory, Asus X99 deluxe motherboards, DTX Titan Black, so those are six gig VRAM cards. We've also got Cooler Master V750 power supplies and all of them except Edsel's, which actually has two of these, a Quadro, a 10 gigabit NIC, and then a V1200 because uh, his system is kind of balls to the wall. And then each system has its own pump as well. So the way that it all works, is that at the back, we've got kind of a, a, a tangle of, of tubing going on here. So we've got quick release fittings here. So we can either connect to the radiator on the top, which is running quite toasty right now, or to the whole room system. And this was actually all done up by Luke's dad, who did an amazing job of plumbing the entire room for us. So you can see the terminus station is actually over here by Nick Van Berkel's PC. So every one of these systems has an inlet and then an outlet, and they all join together as you go around the room. We actually left enough space to have up to seven systems water cooled all at the same time, all on the same loop. And in the bathroom slash server room, this is where the magic happens. So here's our mechanical and then uh, UV sterilizing filters. Here is our reservoir. Here are our dual little giant pumps. And then those lead to a radiator fan setup using Noctua industrial PPC fans. So those waterproof, dustproof ones on the roof of the house so that we are actually physically removing the heat from the building in order to keep our systems cool. We've got a cover on there and we've got a power supply for all of the fans to run as well. So with that recapped, how does it perform? So to evaluate our success, there's a number of different metrics to look at. We can look at the cooling performance of the individual systems based on how hot their CPUs run during an intensive task like video rendering. We can look at the room temperature inside versus the temperature outside to see if removing the heat from the room actually yielded any kind of benefit. And we can look at the convenience and maintenance factors. So let's start with CPU temperatures. When we're running the CPUs on their own radiators, 
The room reaches a temperature of about 31 degrees, so you can actually see that right now, which is about a three degree difference between the inside and the outside. And you should bear in mind that that's on a day that's not particularly sunny, which can cause the room to heat up quite a bit more than the computers could possibly affect. All the systems in the sort of 45 degree plus range on the CPU, which is reasonable, except for Terrans, which I'll talk more about later, and Edsel's, which has an additional graphics card, but no additional radiator space for cooling. So that one's bound to run a little bit on the hotter side. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take the running whole room system. I'll show you guys how we quickly connect and disconnect them. So while they're running, probably not recommended, but we've done it uh, so many times anyway that it, uh, I've lost all fear of the process. All we do is use these to hook it up to the whole room system. Now, what you are likely to see here is a nearly instantaneous drop in CPU temperatures. So we've gone from 47 on core 1 to 41, and I'll make some graphs here showing you guys the difference in CPU temps under load from system to system. So dramatically reduced temperatures across the board by hooking up to the whole room system. Why does that work? Well, it's just a matter of radiator capacity. We could just as easily achieve great CPU temperatures by hooking up much, much larger radiators, as you'll see in some very large towers. This will support like quad rads in the front, duals in the top, a single in the back, and the like. Another advantage of this approach by having it outside is that you don't end up with a chain reaction of the room temperature increasing and therefore the cooling efficiency of your radiator increasing because you're always tied to ambient temperatures. But that's a great question. If one of the objectives was to lower the ambient temperature in the room with the system, how much have you achieved? The answer is not a heck of a lot. We achieved a one degree drop by hooking all of these systems up which I would consider within the sort of margin of error, the sort of a vague sort of concept. So being able to align this correctly helps a lot. On our inlet, so that's the cold side, we're getting 29.7 degrees. And on our outlet, that's the hot side, we are getting 30.0 degrees, which I'm sure someone out there is calculating the specific heat of this you know, mass of water or whatever the case may be. And I'm sure that we are actually dissipating a significant amount of the heat outside, but that is where the whole, was it actually practical thing comes into play because by going with copper tubing, which I think we can all agree is more aesthetically pleasing than insulated PVC, we actually created a situation where we are dissipating a significant amount of the heat we're pulling out of each system into the room Anyway, anyway, via the copper piping. So I guess all that's really left now is, do we consider the project a success? The answer is no. Um, I still think the concept could have worked really well, but there were a few critical things that I really think we could have done differently. Number one, don't use a metal reservoir. Don't use a metal reservoir. Find some kind of plastic reservoir to use because that's where the thing that I promised to talk about later comes in. Terran system has some big problems caused by corrosion bits stuck in his system that uh, even cleaning out his CPU block, which was extremely gunked up, that was a picture I posted on Instagram, could not fix. And um, Point number two is I would definitely recommend installing some kind of a bleed system at the highest point in the loop. That way you are not gonna have as much difficulty filling the system each time uh, compared to us, where we had to add a second pump in order to have enough flow rate and enough pressure in order to get the water in and the air out of our tubing system. Uh, the other thing that I would do differently next time is um, Wow, gee, I guess that ties into a question that we've been asked a lot. Aren't you guys moving? Why did you bother with all of this? And are you gonna do whole room water cooling at the new place? Well, number one, we weren't planning to move when we originally came up with this concept and started working on it. So 
There's that. Uh, number two, no, we do not intend to water cool our systems, let alone whole room water cool our systems at the new office. We're going to have air conditioning, which is probably the solution that we should have gone with in the first place if the objective was to lower the temperature in this room uh, and have our computers run cooler. So I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for sticking with us throughout the whole room water cooling project. We learned a lot. I think we established the feasibility of it, the performance and the silence factor cannot be denied, but the convenience factor of it leaves a lot to be desired and the, um, the execution of it would be extraordinarily time consuming and even more expensive than what we did if you were to really do it properly in such a way that it would require little or zero maintenance over the long run. Thanks for watching. Guys, uh, if you disliked this video, I think you know what to do, but if you liked it and if you appreciated the whole series, then do please press that like button. Also consider checking out all the other things you can do to support us, like buy a cool t-shirt like this one. Uh, you can uh, change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code. You can support us directly through the forum. If you're done doing all that stuff and you're looking for something fun to watch, we actually just did an update to our new office vlog series. So that's where we're doing everything properly Properly. We're not working out of a house anymore, so do feel free to go check that out. And uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the other side.